Hey everyone, welcome to the Happy on Purpose podcast. This is Sandy Waggett and I'm here with my co-host Chris Booth. Chris, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, the joy of giving. Mm. It's going to be good. Yeah. It's, how was your week? Did you have a good week? How was your week? Did you have a good week? It's been an amazing week. I want to know, did you go down the slide? No, but it's in the process. It's in the process. I'm going to be doing that within the next week for sure. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I'm going to hold you to that. You know that right? Thank you for holding me accountable. I wasn't expecting you to ask me that, but I Always. will definitely do that. Always. Yep. Yeah. Did oh, you boy, jump I you every yet? time. Did you skydive That's yet? Did you skydive yet? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> All right, Chris. Okay. So why is giving important? And let's put it in the context of living happy on purpose. Why is giving such a big deal? No, I think it's giving is good because it's doing two things. It's helping the person that you're giving to. And we're not just talking about money, but it could be giving your advice, giving your coaching, giving your mentorship. And then it's also helping you as the giver because you are giving something and it's making you feel better. So it's filling everyone's bucket because you're, and, and when you do that, I, I think it creates a, a third like person, another synergy that it just, it's awesome anyway. Yeah. 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 I like the fact that you pointed out that when we say giving, you're not just talking about money because a lot of people don't have necessarily the wherewithal to give money or monetarily to things, but you can give in other ways. You can give in terms of time. You can give in terms of donations, like even food pantries and clothing. You can give your expertise. I personally, I do both. The com my company, uh, MSW Interactive Designs, we donate financially, but we also donate websites. We donate social media services to nonprofits. And then I give of time personally to some things, which we'll talk about later. But I love the fact that you pointed out that it's just not monetarily. In fact, I think some of the more meaningful giving comes in terms of the time that you give to whatever organization or cause that's important to you. What do you think about that? Sure. It's people will forget the presence that you've given them. They'll forget the gifts, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And yeah. being present with them, giving your time, goes a whole lot, goes further than a gift. That's yeah. what I feel. That's, oh, yeah. Mayo, Mayo Ange Angelo. May Mayo Angelo. Maya Angelo? Mayo, her. Maya Angelo. Maya, Maya Angelo. Yeah, she said that. One of my favorite poets, by the way. So when we give, we come up with some things, five reasons why giving is important. So first, which we've talked about, it really does build meaningful connections. And especially when you're giving of your time and you interact with people in your community. And it also builds your own self-esteem because when you give, you naturally feel better about yourself. And by the way, if you're in a funk, not feeling great, giving of your time and volunteering time is a great way to instantly get out of that. True. Another yeah. one, what increases gratitude. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't matter what you're going in, going through in your life. You could be at a very low moment, whether it's financial or going through something and, and it could be tough. And sometimes you could feel like you're not going to be able to break through it. But if you can focus on gratitude and how grateful you are, like, I'm grateful that I was able to get up. I'm grateful that I was able to go for a walk this morning. If you think of those things, it makes that fear and that low self-esteem go away and it builds up your confidence and things like that. So yeah. I, I think it's important to be grateful for sure. Yeah, it well. absolutely is. And when you're volunteering your time and especially with organizations, with people who are maybe less fortunate than you are, it also gives you perspective on your own life, things that you take for granted. So it can really amplify your gratitude. I know I, my I'm in the big sisters, big brothers, big sisters program. And I've had a little sister for over a decade and watching her grow up and some of the things that she didn't have that I was blessed to have growing up. I'm just really thankful. Next, reduces stress and anxiety and provides a sense of purpose. Talk to me about those two. Reduces stress and anxiety. We all have problems and different things going on in our mind and we have all those worries and you cannot, um, 
have a positive attitude with a negative mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on giving, uh, we're talking about the giving and the gratitude, it's going to re reduce that because you, you, you can't have a bad attitude and, and try to give someone somebody. Mm -hmm. you just, it just doesn't work. But when you open up yeah. your heart, let's if your fist is closed, you cannot, you can't receive anything and you can't give anything. But if your hands are open like this, then you're able to accept and to, to receive. And that's what yeah. it's about a hug. Yeah. You don't hug people like this, you open your arms. And, and so I think that um, will help reduce stress and anxiety too, because yeah. just doing like that, just the motion. Yeah. I just love watching you even do that on camera visually. Um, that's a really great analogy. Very powerful. So thank you for sharing that. And it provides a sense of purpose. I think just generally speaking as humans, we feel better about ourselves and about our lives when we help other people. Uh, I think it, it really is second nature to us. And um, I just, I don't know about you, but I just feel when I come off of a volunteer uh, job or something, I just feel alive and immensely grateful, energized and happy. I agree. When I was uh, doing stuff in the uh, obese community, I was dealing with obese people all around the world. And it was such a great feeling to be able to help them, to show them uh, little small steps that they can take. Because a lot of times the obese community, people don't really pay attention to them and they just push them off to the side. And so it was great to be able to donate a lot of my time and learn from the obese community and all those different things. And was, I knew it was not just about me. It was about a bigger, greater purpose in this world. Okay. So. I totally get it. And it's, it's an amazing feeling. It really is. It's yeah. So we always talk frameworks on this podcast. So we came up with a seven step framework to build giving more as a habit into our lives. And so the first of the seven steps, much like last week is to reflect on your values and interests. So what are some things that you care about? And if you think about that, what you value, what your interests are, then you can look for opportunities to volunteer or give up your time to certain organizations and your local community. Uh, what's the next one, Chris? The next one is start small. And I think that's important. So many people, they have great hearts and they just want to change the world and just do it all, every single city, every country, all that. But you got to start small. You got to start with just a little bit. Just today, I'm going to do this one simple thing. And, and as you do that, it becomes a habit and then you can grow and expand upon that. And as you're doing good, other people are going to join you. And that's how the mission really gets to be really mm -hmm. big. And yeah. Yeah. And the next one goes into that, evolves from that, find ways to give within your current lifestyle. So if you love to run or bike or cook, you can volunteer and give in those areas. Like you can volunteer at a charity run or a charity event. You can cook meals for local shelter. So things that you already know that you love to do and already fit in your current lifestyle is a great way to start. What's next? That's true. And then setting goals. I think it's important to set a goal. If you want to volunteer a certain number of hours each month, say, all right, I want to do four hours a month. Okay. What does that look like? An hour a week. Everybody can do that and just set a goal on that and then reevaluate your goals and move forward and do things like that. And yeah. so goals are important. Nice. And then the next one is to get involved in your community. So the more involved you get, the more opportunities you become aware of. Even just a, something as simple as going to like networking socials for your business, you meet people and you learn about things that they're involved in and it can open doors and opportunities that you never even knew existed. That's true. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was just in a meeting the other day with a nonprofit organization and uh, it was just so great to be there and spend time. It's like you could stay there all day and just hang out and, and get to know people and everything. It's really, yeah. it's heartwarming for everybody involved. It's great. Mm -hmm. And then be being mindful of your giving. I think that's very important. You take time to research the charities and the organizations before you're given to them. Don't just, it looks like a good name. I'm going to donate to them. But just really, what are you passionate about? Or what are you into? What do you see in this world that needs more help? Maybe it's helping out single parents. Maybe it's helping divorced moms or, or whatever it is. Just do some research and say, this is something that I really want to get involved in and do yeah. that. There's a lot of people need help. 
Yeah. And then number seven, the last one is to reflect on the impact of your giving. And it's not so much of a, hey, look at me, look at what I did. It's reflection from the standpoint of celebration that you contributed and what it does when you celebrate your own wins, right? Because that's a win. It's helping some, helping someone, helping an organization is a win. It motivates you to keep going and doing more. It is not bad to celebrate your wins. So reflect on the impact of your giving, you know, keep you motivated to give more. So we've gone through the framework. What things do you do, Chris, in your life from a giving standpoint? I definitely get money donates, things like that. But one thing that since I guess in social media, I'm known as like a fitness person running type thing. And I get people that are messaging me, oh my gosh, you inspired me so much. And I don't think I can ever run. And people say it to me all the time. And that's exactly what was told to me. I, I said, I didn't think I could run. And here I am six marathons later. And yes. I'm telling you, you can't do it. So I kind of coach people and give them some little challenges like, hey, just go out and run for five minutes. Do something simple like that. And, uh, and then one thing too, there's a girl, one of my friends, she's a flight attendant and she's always posting workout videos and things. And I was like, do you have a YouTube channel? She's no, I'm thinking about putting one. I was like, oh my gosh, the world needs to see what you're doing. She's 52 years old, flight attendant, just traveling all around and, and getting her work out there and record them and help me. It was like, you can, it's, so she's like her head spinning. She's like flying to, I think she might be in Vegas right now. I don't know if she's flying around and she's like my head spinning and all that stuff. And so just helping with that, helping people do things that they didn't think they could do by encouraging them and helping them. So what about you, Sandy? Now, you're, I love the fact that you, what you just described was out of the box when people think about giving because the traditional forms are monetarily and volunteering. Like you shared a couple of examples where you are giving in terms of motivation and just help to other people in your circle, other people that are connected to you um, and motivating them to push themselves and go beyond, which is another form of giving that we don't often consider. Yeah, so I, I serve on boards just because of the role that I'm in these days with my company. And so I do some work with Citizens Against Domestic Violence. I serve on their board and also help them with their website and their social media with my digital agency. We donate all of that. And like I said, with Big Brothers Big Sisters, in my book, Bold Moves, I talk about my little sister, Haley. And the fact that she's 19 now, and I was matched with her when she was eight. And the impact that she's had on my life, I think far exceeds the impact I had on her life. And that's what Giddy really does for you. I just define what fits with your life and with your interests and, and go for it. It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a challenge you put out there to people. Maybe you're given money, but I tell you to give some of your time. Give some of your time. And another thing too is I have a bunch of books and I'll every now and then I'll, when I am doing my cleaning, I'll take them to Goodwill or something, or I'll post and say, Hey, who wants these books? And then give them. To so I encourage you to, to give above and beyond just the money. Love it. Love it. Love the challenge, Chris. All right. So I'm going to put a few uh, resources in the show notes. So we've got Charity Navigator, giving what you, what we can. Uh, the Life You Can Save, Random Acts of Kindness Foundation. So these are just some ways that you can research good charities, good organizations, reliable organizations and reputable organizations. But that list is no substitute for getting out there and networking in your own local community and getting to know people who are involved in local organizations. Um, that's where the rubber meets the road and you'll know whether it's a great organization to donate time, money, uh, or expertise too. Do you have any closing thoughts on this topic, Chris? I was in a meeting uh, at a nonprofit and I said, what is your biggest challenge right now? I think that's a question you can ask. What is your biggest challenge right now? And she said, staffing, we need staffing. We need people to help. So now my antennas are looking for people that want to help at this nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think that'd be a good question. So this is a good thing. I, I love this episode and I hope you guys do too, but it's awesome. I'm excited. Great. Chris, what, what, repeat that question one more time in case people missed it and I could write it down. What is your biggest challenge right now? As you're talking to someone saying, what is your biggest challenge right now? You know what? I just have trouble 
getting socks for my people. I have a, a friend here in St. Louis uh, who goes around and feeds the homeless on Wednesdays and he does a live video feed of the homeless and he's like, Chris, I need jackets and I need coats. Obviously in the winter time like that. So I ask people what's their biggest challenges because sometimes what yeah. you're thinking they need, what you're thinking they need is not really what they need. Right. They need something else. And so you just point out and ask them, what's your biggest challenge? What do you need? Love and it. Just trying Love to it. Them. Yeah, that's great advice. All right, Chris, let's wrap this up. And thanks. This was fun. Yeah. Nice I hope welcome. you have an amazing week and let's sign off and go live happy on purpose. See you guys later. Bye. All right. Bye.